So clearly, playtesting is far more important than many people realize, like we talked about in the last video. And in the video before that, we talk about how criticism is crucial, which is why we do playtesting in the first place. It takes more than just getting criticism to improve your game. You have to use that criticism right, or you risk making your game worse than it was. And we don't want that. My name is Ray Benefield. Making the best games is part of my special interest, of course. And today we're going to talk about why you're using your criticism wrong. All right, so you have your players and they know things. They play video games, right? But they're not you and they're not designers. They don't know your game like you do. Things that players end up suggesting end up being things that are within their realm of understanding when they play games. It's not really from a designer perspective, and they don't know all the details that go into your particular rule set. Even if your players end up being educated designers themselves, they don't know what your goals are, they don't know what your vision is. And if you just blindly implement that feedback, you could end up clashing with your own vision, ending up creating something that's not that great. Which is the reason why when I give advice to creators, I tell them to go with their gut and go with what makes them feel good. Many creators will end up telling you that, yeah, they already do this, but ultimately what they're doing is justifying bad decisions and being stubborn rather than recognizing that they need to use this to be cautious about the feedback that they get. There is so much that goes on in game development, so much to learn, so many tips. We've posted nearly 30 at this point, and I still have months before I reach my understanding of it, and I don't know that much. Let me give you an example that I learned from one of my games. This happened like less than a year ago. This was a moment in time when this game went into its first major playtest with a group that was outside of my internal testers. They gave wonderful feedback, but their suggestions to fix these things weren't exactly what was needed. I got three common pieces of feedback from most of the lobby. The first one was, there are too many grenades. Maybe you should lower it from two to one. The second one was, the courtyard is too open. Please add cover to it. The third one was, the shotgun is too powerful. Just remove it. I sat there and I watched replays for several hours. And I realized there was one key thing that was causing each of these pieces of feedback. These are very short rounds. So at the beginning of the round, you spawn, you could chuck a grenade from one team to the other team super easily. Explosions start going off, people start dying as they traverse the courtyard, and all of a sudden people don't have very many grenades. The solution was a lot simpler than anybody could have suggested in that play session. All I had to do was put a grenade blocker right above the center of the map. Then you couldn't chuck grenades across anymore. What ended up happening, there's less grenades, less explosions, People weren't dying in the courtyard, and people suddenly had grenades to counterplay the shotgun area. Simple. I give it back to the same group the next day. They play it, I asked if they had the same feedback, and they're like, no, it feels good now, I don't know why it changed. Yeah, me neither. Don't get me wrong, players had the best intentions, they just wanted to play better, and sometimes they have the best answers. But don't be so quick to implement it, so many creators just start changing things, just to make that player happy. They come back and they're like, hey, is it better now? And typically it's not because the creator didn't take the time to make sure that that change was appropriate to fix their actual problem. Take the time to watch your players. When they give feedback, take note of their feedback and compare it to what they were doing in game. Typically the problem they had is a byproduct of something else that's poorly designed and you need to find what that is. More often than not, the solution is far more elegant than the suggestion that people give. And if the suggestion that people give is just a bandage fix, all you're gonna be doing is introducing more problems in the long term and making it harder and harder and harder to get to good gameplay. As creators, we want to please our players, but this is your baby and typically you know what's best for your baby. So just be hyper aware of any change that you make based on player feedback. Making deliberate choices is absolutely necessary to succeed at game design. And we're 27 tips in at this point, which means it's about time we talk about game design. We're gonna do that in the next video because it's the real thing that you should be focusing on. And make sure you catch up from yesterday's, the day before's, 
all the other videos. There's, like I said, 27 at this point. You got a lot to watch. So until then, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm off to go record the next video now.